Saya telah menyerah surat peletakan jawatan sebagai Perdana Menteri ke-7. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Dan untuk itu kerajaan memutuskan untuk melaksanakan perintah kawalan pergerakan. Tetapi jika saudara-saudari masih bergerak ke sana, ke sini, ke sana, ke sini. It's not about me, it's about what we can do together as one. Defence Force bombs what it says is a military compound belonging to the Palestinian militant group Hamas in Gaza. Water can carry a ship. It can also sink a ship. Don't ever give up. Never lose hope. It's about the final moments of the helicopter flight that ended in tragedy for nine people, including Kobe Bryant. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. The 2020 Summer Olympics, now the latest major sports cancellation caused by the global COVID-19 pandemic. Stop Asian hate. It's a hashtag that went viral after Maradona. Diego Maradona has died this year. Salam sejahtera sekali lagi. Salam sejahtera. Okay, Elaine, so I heard Sabah dah boleh dine in eh. You believe that? No? <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're all trained very well to give a day or two to see if any announcement given are true or false. Well, of course, except when Mr. Prime Minister says MCO extended. Mm. Itu we all... Follow la. <laughs> I feel pretty bad for cafes, restaurant owners, and their helpers. I need to prepare for dine-ins at the very last minute. Pastu kena saman la pula bila buka because no proper instructions to operate. Yeah, It, yeah. A few case, a few cases uh, happened yesterday. But come on la, it's not their fault. Dan yang bagi saman tu pun agak-agak la jua sikit, right? What I'm also puzzled, I and mean, I don't know whether this is just our country. Or ada lagi negara lain out there. But when we have two lanes or four lanes, roadblock je terus satu lane. Checking pula, ada tiga orang monitor. Satu lane. Why can't we just open all the lanes and have one person to handle each station? Betul kata. Is that not common sense ke ini? Rakyat keluar pun bukan ikut, you know, suka hati. Kalau keluar pun, it's pretty obvious they have uh, permit letters, work permits or what not. Got me thinking lah ini. Di mana bak otak kita? Oh, okay. Ilin, Ilin marah sikit malam ni. Hmm. Tapi, 
itulah I pun no comment mungkin uh, ada SOP pun mungkin semua orang confused orang yang menjalankan tugas tu pun macam tak tahu which SOP to follow which SOP baru which SOP hmm. nama yang mana boleh pakai yang tak boleh pakai tapi itulah it all goes back to the announcement yang diberi yang dikeluarkan oleh pihak atas hmm. and we have no control over that Uh, yeah, itu pun um, agak-agak lah. Like when you want to give out announcement, you check 100 times betul ke tak before you announce it to the public. But anyway, let's calm down. Without further ado, connect with us on our social media links below. Download our Unity app available on iOS and Android. We have two politicians from both sides of the aisle waiting to be on. So guys, go get your popcorn. Come back because we'll be right back. Kepada mereka yang masih setia menonton episod malam ini Isu pengangguran di Malaysia sememangnya masih membimbangkan Bukan sahaja di kalangan rakyat Malah masih menjadi topik perbincangan di kalangan ahli-ahli politik Saya Aini Sohaidi bersama Elin Audrey Dan anda masih berada di Unity Show Untuk lebih memahami tentang isu pengangguran di Malaysia Kita bawakan bukan satu tapi dua tetamu khas Howard Lee, Ketua Pemuda DAP dan juga Syaril Hamdan, Ketua Penerangan AMNO. Hai. Good. 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 Uh, okay lah, let's just get straight into it. Um, okay guys, uh, kalau kita lihat laporan oleh Department of Statistics Malaysia, kadar pengangguran kita sebelum pandemik COVID-19 adalah 3.3% dan kadar ini telah naik ke 4.6% in 2021. Of course, kita acknowledge throughout the year, sejak berlakunya pandemik COVID-19, we have seen some improvement. Tapi kadang ini masih tinggi dan ianya masih menjejaskan ramai orang di luar sana. Jadi, my question is, selain pandemik COVID-19 ni, apa faktor lain yang menjadi penyumbang kepada masalah ini? Mungkin kita boleh mulakan dengan Syahril? Uh, terima kasih, Haini. Terima kasih, Elin uh, and uh, Howard uh, di bersama dalam uh, sesi atau episod Unity Show pada malam ini. Uh, topik tentang pengangguran dan soalan pertama uh, selain COVID-19 apa penyumbang kepada kepada kadar pengangguran uh, yeah. bagi saya kita, kita boleh sebut secara ringkas penyumbang-penyumbang yang semua orang pernah dengar skills mismatch yeah? um, dari mm. segi apa yang diperlukan industri dan apa yang dikeluarkan oleh uh, sistem pendidikan ataupun sistem pengajian kita mungkin tidak uh, tidak sama uh, ada yang menimbulkan soal uh, kemahiran, graduan dan sebagainya. Semua tu ada unsur-unsur kebenaran. Tak ada satu faktor yang kita boleh cakap langsung tak betul. Tapi yeah. semua orang pernah dengar faktor tu. Uh, yang saya nak sebut mungkin sebagai pembuka perbincangan kita pada malam ini uh, ialah satu pandangan atau perspektif yang lebih radikal iaitu dalam sistem kapitalisme um, macam sekarang yang, di, yang dipraktikkan uh, sekarang ini yeah. akan sentiasa ada pengangguran akan sentiasa ada pengangguran kerana uh, bukan niat syarikat-syarikat untuk memastikan pengangguran sifat. Jadi pengangguran akan sentiasa ada. Dia bergantung kepada cycle ekonomi. Sebab tu ekonomi sedang sedang rancak, uh, kadar pengangguran akan rendah. Bila keadaan ekonomi tidak rancak ataupun hambar, maka pengangguran akan meningkat. Jadi sampai bila pun pengangguran ini akan wujud selagi kita tak mengubah cara kita melihat sistem pengangguran itu sendiri ataupun definisi pengangguran itu sendiri sebagai perkara yang perlu diambil serius yang perlu ditangani oleh kerajaan secara direct. So in short, for as long as we operate dalam satu sistem yang serah majoritinya kepada syarikat swasta, sistem swasta, yeah. pengangguran will always exist. Howard, <coughs> what's your opinion? 
Um, thanks Elaine, thanks Ani, salam sejahtera kepada kawan-kawan di luar sana uh, yang menonton Unity Show. Uh, I have something quite shocking. Saya setuju dengan Syaril. Just uh, not shocking more this day. Uh, I mean, antara saya dengan Syaril ni, kita tahu banyak yang kita setuju. Tapi, uh, the, the issue dengan apa yang kita hadapi sekarang uh, adalah punya sedikit masalah yang agak ketara dalam sistem ekonomi kita uh, dan juga dari segi minda dan juga uh, pemahaman terhadap sistem ekonomi kita oleh orang orang ramai. Hmm. Uh, saya pastilah uh, Elaine, Aini dan juga kawan-kawan di luar sana mum- mungkin akan berasa oh atau sekurang-kurangnya dengar dari kawan-kawan. Uh, hmm. Ramai industri susah atau payah nak nak teruskan kehidupan atau terus berjuang inverted commerce sekiranya kita tak boleh uh, benarkan uh, pekerja atau tenaga kerja warga asing untuk masuk. Uh, kerana tenaga uh, kerja asing lebih murah daripada orang tempatan. Yeah. Itulah masalah. Itulah masalah apabila kita sebagai satu ekonomi atau sekurang-kurangnya the, the, the manufacturing uh, subsection of the economy terlampau tergantung kepada cheap foreign labor or unskilled and cheap foreign labor. Yeah. Kerana itu akan sebenarnya menekan ekonomi kita untuk uh, kurang bersaing atau kurang mm. mampu persaingan dengan ekonomi yang lain sebab kita akan sentiasa cari yang lebih murah dan yeah. itu akan menekan orang tempatan untuk dapat pekerjaan. Saya mula dengan situ tetapi masalahnya adalah ber, berkenaan dengan uh, the way we see the economy is about uh, basically a race to the bottom a vicious cycle and a vicious race to the bottom rather than a virtuous race to an economy di mana lebih ramai orang Malaysia dapat gaji yang lebih lumayan dan gaji yang lebih baik. Um, Howard, so how are we doing sekiranya kita bandingkan Malaysia dengan negara-negara jiran kita? Uh, okay, saya, saya, saya mulalah. Saya tak nak panjang sangat. Uh, kita sedia maklum bahawasanya jiran yang paling dekat, Indonesia. Ya. Yeah. Mereka bersedang bersiap siaga dan bersedia untuk menjadi ekonomi yang yang kelima terbesar di dunia hmm. uh, dalam beberapa tahun yang akan datang. Uh, mereka sedang uh, mewujudkan pelbagai peluang, uh, khususnya apabila mereka pindah Jakarta atau ibu kota mereka ke Samarinda atau ke Kalimantan. Hmm. Uh, di situ akan wujudnya pelbagai peluang uh, pekerjaan dan juga pelbagai peluang uh, enterprising. Dan di situ wujudnya satu 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 peluang yang besar atau kumpulan peluang yang besar yang setakat ini di Malaysia kita tak nampak ada peluang itu yang dapat bersaing dengan itu. Dan secara kesimpulannya saya rasa Malaysia punya peluang, punya potensi tetapi potensi dan peluang itu tidak dapat dimaksimalkan untuk menarik anak watan sendiri untuk kekal di sini. Where should where should we be by end of the year? Are we supposed to go down to four percent or lower, Howard? Well, this is actually quite a sad state of affairs. I think if, if you're talking about um, unemployment, yeah, whether you're talking about youth unemployment, whether you're talking about unemployment as a whole, as a country for the entire of uh, for the entire population, these are two separate. Uh, numbers, but what I can tell you, I, I don't want to be doom and gloom about it, uh, yeah. because we as a nation have a responsibility to do something about it. But uh, we have never seen, and I think Cheryl can can confirm this. Um, we we have never seen youth unemployment as bad as we are seeing right now, yeah. as a nation, in in its history, quite frankly. Uh, perhaps because in the past we've never had statistics that specifically points out about youth unemployment. But uh, let's put that aside. Youth unemployment is at its worst that we've ever seen in this country since it's been recorded. So what are we going to do about it? It's not about what are we as individuals going to do about it. It needs to be an all of government and all of society uh, effort about it. Yeah. But I do feel, uh, I mean, whether Cheryl agrees with me or not, that's by the wayside. But the government has 
a role and a responsibility to intervene. And the intervention needs to be one that works with commerce, needs to be one with industries, needs to be work with, it needs to be one that works with the entire education industry to intervene so that we are preparing our youth, we are preparing the current generation and the future generation to be prepared to enter those jobs when they're available. When they're not available, we work on that. But are they even, or are we, the youth of Malaysia, even prepared to enter those jobs when they're available? I don't think so, right now. And that's a problem. And there's something and a problem that we need to be dealing with together. Um, Syari macam how ada sebut sikit tadi lah uh, Responsibility siapa sebenarnya untuk menguruskan polisi-polisi yang ada di luar sana Memang kerajaan kah? Uh, memang kerajaan uh, Itulah sebabnya wujud sebuah kerajaan Untuk menguruskan pelbagai uh, persoalan-persoalan besar dalam masyarakat Dan dalam konteks ni soal pekerjaan dan ekonomi lah Uh, jadi dalam hal ni saya pun setuju dengan Howard Benda yang tak berapa shocking lagi this days uh, Banyak perkara yang sebenarnya dari segi ekonomi Dan dari segi pengurusan pentadbiran sesebuah uh, negara tu <coughs> Mungkin golongan muda tak kira parti Ada ada banyak jugalah uh, persamaan Cuma dalam soalan ni secara khususnya uh, Menyambut apa yang Howard sebut tadi uh, Ada beberapa perkara yang kita nak kena lihat Uh, secara lebih mendalam tanpa terlalu yeah. teknikal lah ya uh, yeah. Satu, setuju uh, Youth unemployment, pengangguran belia ataupun orang muda paling serius sekali dalam sejarah Malah kalau tak silap saya Majoriti penganggur dalam Malaysia sekarang ni adalah diklasifikasikan sebagai belia uh, yeah. We have, if I'm not wrong, the last number was 750,000 or so Ya, yeah, 750,000 so, uh, 4.7% ke 3% ke persen-persen ni tolak tepi jap Yeah. Sebab sebenarnya you look at the absolute number This is one of those cases where the absolute number is uh, perhaps more instructive Than a percentage uh, You have 750,000 people unemployed uh, Pre-COVID, sebelum COVID Generally I think about 450 to 500,000 So okay. uh, we have effectively lost 250 to 300,000 jobs lah Ataupun you oh. added to the unemployment figure That's point one Point two, uh, definisi pengangguran yang dipakai di Malaysia ni Uh, sebenarnya menyorok uh, banyak uh, reality sebenar um, Howard, correct me if I'm wrong I might be mistaken on the number of hours But if, I'm, if I remember it correctly As long as you work satu jam seminggu yes. uh, You classified as employed tau. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> who works a, a, wow. an hour a week, right? Yeah. But so, you know, Benda tu memesongkan lah, Syaril Ya, yeah, memesongkan the real story lah So, it's worse than the 750,000 That's point two Point three is bukan hanya you have you only have to work one hour a week and be paid therefore one hour a week. Yeah. Um, you only even if you are uh, on uh, cuti tanpa gaji, mm. you are still considered employed. So, yes. but the data doesn't capture that your employers have asked you to go on unpaid leave. Mm. Jadi, bapa ramai orang yang unpaid leave. I think we have we probably have friends and acquaintances pun yang uh, yeah. mengalami situasi yang sama, kan? Jadi, mm-hmm. bapa orang kat situ pun is not captured under the seven hundred. So it's worse, it's worse. It's maybe even close to a million, maybe even more. Uh, jadi pengangguran ini serius dan memerlukan intervention daripada kerajaan dan hanya kerajaan yang boleh buat uh, segala uh, uh, intervensi yang diperlukan untuk memperbetul perkara ini. Apa yang Howard kata tadi, bermula daripada sistem pendidikan untuk memastikan modal insan yang kita keluarkan ada kualiti untuk match dengan aspirasi ekonomi kita. Aspirasi yeah. ekonomi kita juga seperti mana Howard sebut tadi, tidak lagi nak bergantung harap kepada cheap labor Bukan yeah. hanya pada uh, basically cheap resources lah, right? And resources here is land and labor if you think about it uh, We do, we are no longer in the 70s, 80s and you can rely on that And that's never been a sustainable model anyway uh, You want to be something a bit more like Singapore Not entirely like but a yeah. bit more like that eh? Yang mana ada uh, kita punya capacity ekonomi itu lebih besar To build economic capacity, you need to be able to fill it with high quality jobs and the high quality labor that will be able to fill it. So bermula dari situ. Uh, and then on the on the itu supply side lah, kononnya kan? Yeah. Dari segi the 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 raw material lah, manusia yeah. tu sendiri, modal insan. And then on the job side pun nak kena pastikan uh, kita ada teknologi, kita ada investment dalam teknologi, kita ada investment dalam R&D yang jauh lebih kecil daripada negara-negara maju sekarang ni as a percentage of KDNK which needs to increase. So on both sides of the spectrum, there needs to be work done. But this is something that every politician will say. Um, yeah. And it takes years. Yeah, ni, ni bukan kerja lima tahun. 
ni kerja 10 15 tahun mungkin mm-hmm. in the meantime tu macam awak kata apa yang kita nak buat so kalau in the meantime you tak buat apa-apa radical then you hanya cakap tentang long term long term long term knowing that politicians only work in five years not all yeah. politicians many politicians operate in five year cycles because that's where election cycles are yeah. so nobody really really wants to think uh, 10 15 years uh, i mean we do but not everybody acts that way right mm-hmm. apa yang kita perlu buat in the interim ni sambil kita nak dapat to that point where you get this high high income high quality economy so to speak then then that's where the debate Yeah, somebody like me, I'm not sure how it truly agrees. I think he knows that I've said this a number of times. I think we need a job guarantee scheme, yeah. a job guarantee scheme in which government kerajaan menyediakan pekerjaan pekerjaan untuk support mereka yang tak dapat pekerjaan dalam sektor swasta. Uh, uh-huh. Dan pekerjaan pekerjaan yang diwujudkan oleh kerajaan ini adalah pekerjaan yang membantu masyarakat, membantu sosial, ya, membantu membantu kualiti hidup uh, dalam yeah. negara kita. Uh, mungkin kerja itu dalam perpustakaan mungkin kerja untuk menambah pembantu guru ya kerja-kerja yang kita rasa sesuai untuk mengisi kekosongan uh, ataupun mengurangkan pengangguran di samping itu ada value so bukannya kita bagi duit free tapi kita pastikan semua orang dapat income dapat kerja yang memaruah dan membantu masyarakat dan negara so that's what i that's where i come in some people will say that is too radical too much spending on the part of government dan sebagainya but i do not see any other idea that can really tackle this problem of endemic unemployment sebab kalau you just tunggu untuk pelabur masuk you tunggu projek ini diwujudkan yeah. in the end we are still going to go back to a situation where at best 500,000 people are unemployed itu dengan our population size sekarang yeah. uh, over time it will presumably increase and then covid will not be the last economic recession yang kita lalu so takkanlah at the best of time we are saying to people no matter what half a million of you will be unemployed. I don't yeah. think that's a moral thing to do yeah. and I don't think that is uh, necessary. Yeah. Um okay kita fokus pula kepada golongan belia especially graduan baru yang tak dapat kerja. Macam mana kita nak bantu mereka to be more marketable and employable? We start with Howard. You, you see di di sinilah uh, aku dengan Syaril akan nampak seolah-olah kita tengah uh, sing from the same hymn sheet lah. Sebab Um, apabila kita fokus kepada atau memberi fokus kepada sama ada kita boleh menyebabkan atau membantu anak-anak muda untuk lebih marketable hmm. kita tak tanggungjawab atau kewajipan kepada anak-anak muda di luar sana yang tak ada kerja sendiri tetapi yeah. suka atau tidak dalam keadaan sekarang di mana Uh, kebanyakan bisnes-bisnes perniagaan uh, kecil atau uh, sederhana lah SME mm-hmm. tengah susah dan susah tu cara lembut nak cakap lah memang tengah sengsara yeah. kalau kita guna uh, piawaian atau piagam kepada orang dahulunya anak-anak muda sama ada mereka bersedia untuk menawarkan diri kepada SME mengikut uh, piagam atau piawaian dahulu mm-hmm. benar macam kata aku nak bagi uh, it's basically like tomato uh, talking about tomato in the context of apples yeah. okey so uh, bagi saya lah <coughs> lebih sesuai untuk kita tanggalkan diri sendiri atau bebaskan diri sendiri daripada Uh, menyebut, membincangkan atau membicarakan kesesuaian orang muda atau anak Malaysia berbanding dengan uh, kesesuaian atau keupayaan mereka berbanding dengan apa yang ada di luar sana sebab tidak yeah. ada sesiapa yang tahu apa yang bersesuaian di luar sana betul tak tanpa nak masuk ke dalam uh, conversation atau dalam perbincangan uh, fourth industrial revolution perbincangan tentang disruption and disruption and yang ada di luar sana the biggest disruption being covid-19 uh, and you know basically the new norm means a norm that we don't even know what it's about yet okay hmm. tak ada tourism tak ada fmb sekarang ni what what is What is the form of the new economy? Tak ada orang tahu. Yeah. Tak tahu. Semua ramalan saja. Semua adalah jangkaan saja. So, uh, when, when we talk about sama ada kita nak menyiapsiagakan anak-anak muda, it's all, I'm sorry, but it is basically just all a load of talk of speculation. But, 
kita tahu apa yang diperlukan sekarang. Okay. Uh, biar saya elaborate a little bit on that. Okay. Uh, dari segi, uh, saya akan guna istilah yang kita faham sekarang. Penerangan. Penerangan masyarakat. Dari segi untuk memastikan orang kat kampung, di Kampung Baru Pasir Pinji, di Ipoh, uh, orang kat pedalaman di Sabah, uh, orang kat rumah rumah panjang di Sarawak. Yeah. Berkenaan dengan vaksin, adakah kerajaan atau kita sebagai satu masyarakat sedang bertungkus lumus sedaya upaya dengan sebanyak Uh, atau se- sepenuh usaha kita menyampaikan maklumat yang diperlukan untuk pastikan semua yang di luar sana rumah panjang ke kampung baru ke di, di pedalaman tahu betapa pentingnya untuk vaksinasi didaftarkan untuk individu tidak kerana kadar uh, pendaftaran untuk vaksin sangat rendah so maksudnya adakah kita bersedia untuk ajak kawan-kawan yang sebelum ini menjadi tour guide untuk uh, menyesuaikan diri untuk apply the expertise untuk menjadi pegawai penerangan untuk pastikan orang di di kampung baru orang di pedalaman orang di rumah panjang berdaftar adakah kita uh, menyediakan uh, PPV atau pusat pemberian vaksinasi uh, hmm. yang mobile untuk masuk ke pedalaman untuk menyampaikan vaksinasi kepada orang di kampung tidak. Dan kenapa? Kita dengar banyak cerita, oh sebab tenaga kerja ni tak cukup, hmm. kerana infranya tak cukup. Di situlah wujudnya peluang-peluang pekerjaan yang belum cukup diterokai, yang kita boleh dan di situlah peluang-peluang pekerjaan untuk kita menyelesaikan masalah yang disebutkan tadi. Hmm. Ya. Yeah. Betul. Um, apa tu uh, Syari? Mungkin Syari boleh... Uh, apa tu nak tambah sedikit macam Syaril uh, to your earlier point when you said providing jobs is one thing tapi nak make sure mereka peroleh pekerjaan yang berkualiti is another problem jadi bagaimana sebenarnya kita nak tackle isu mix and match kelayakan mereka dengan pekerjaan yang sedia ada um, I think we have bigger problems than that at this point uh, to not not to invalidate your question I think that's a that's a very valid question dari segi macam mana nak pastikan the matching yang bagus lah uh, But uh, before I, I go there, and I'll spend a couple of minutes there, the problem is bigger. Uh, it's at this point, itu bukan masalah paling besar. At this point, it is simply that companies are closing down. Yeah. Jadi pengangguran sedang uh, terlalu serius. Uh, tak ada company yang ada insentif atau ada keyakinan dalam ekonomi untuk pergi hire orang baru. Uh, mm-hmm. Then you have an issue of uh, fresh graduates yang akan masuk dalam pasaran. Yeah. Uh, dan mereka akan masuk dalam pasaran bersaing dengan abang atau kakak mereka yang 2 3 tahun lebih berumur mm-hmm. yang ada mm-hmm. yang ada job experience mm-hmm. yang CV dia orang panjang sikit berbanding yeah. dengan fresh graduate yang CV tak kosong lagi. Uh, so if I am a company that's already risk averse because of the situation why would I take a fresh graduate versus I take somebody who's got 3 or 4 years work experience uh, the salaries pun dia tak boleh nak demand sekarang kan. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's almost like Uh, a situation where there is in my mind potentially a deflationary effect on wages lah on on incomes dari segi gaji uh, so di situ sebenarnya itu masalah dia sekarang how do we make sure uh, how do we make sure syarikat-syarikat perusahaan-perusahaan kecil atau sederhana tidak tutup kedai tidak gulung tikar uh, macam mana kita nak pastikan pelabur-pelabur yang mewujudkan peluang pekerjaan especially yang berkualiti bukan hanya yang low quality uh, yeah dan yang hanya ambil uh, pekerja-pekerja dengan gaji minima walaupun itu kita tak tak adalah menolak ya tapi kita nak yang lebih high quality uh, bagaimana nak pastikan mereka tak keluar uh, that is the problem right now it's not even a matching problem because you have yalah like i said again 750,000 waiting uh, i don't think there's 750,000 skills mismatch i don't think that's a problem the problem is the jobs are not around at this point jadi Uh, when we go back to what the new classical economists will say is uh, full employment, which is 500,000 people unemployed maybe, uh, yeah. that's when we can talk about skills mismatch. Uh, tapi, to answer your question in any case, Aini, uh, okay, dari segi skills mismatch ni, saya fikir ada beberapa pakar yang buat kajian lebih uh, dal- mendalam dari segi bagaimana kurikulum tu sendiri boleh uh, mendapat input daripada industri, bukan hanya bukan hanya akademik saja yang buat curriculum tu but you get involvement industry 
uh, yeah. there's some talk about sort of charting the kind of jobs for the future mm. and even with all the imperfect knowledge try and make sure that the kind of cost mix yang wujud dalam universiti kita adalah sikit correlation dengan itu jadi semua itu boleh buat but nobody's talking about that any now because yeah. uh, for the next 18 to 24 months uh, it's about how do you solve this lack of jobs uh, and how do you combat uh, wage deflation Okay, sebelum kita sambung lagi bercerita tentang topik online ni let's take a short break jangan ke mana-mana we'll be right back Bangun tidur Lockdown lagi Lockdown lagi Tidur lagi Bangun Lockdown lagi ah, 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 ah. Bangun tidur Lockdown lagi Lockdown lagi Tidur lagi Bangun Lockdown lagi Welcome back to the second half of the show. Hope you guys are still okay out there. Okay, Howard, given you've experienced working in the UK, is there anything that you learned that we can impose in Malaysia to help address our unemployment issues? Um, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic question, but uh, I'd, I'd like to um, essentially advise against comparing apples oranges or even mushrooms to chicken actually uh, the economy in the uk uh, first you're talking about a, a much more advanced economy as a whole in comparison to what we are uh, i'm not talking about they're better people or the you know they're better consumers or they have better more sophisticated demand so it's, it's just a different ecosystem altogether there's a, that that's the context uh, but what i can say here is uh, in the UK, uh, or in fact, uh, I mean, it's not just the UK I've worked in, I've worked in uh, several other countries. What fundamentally uh, makes us different from them or what makes them fundamentally different from us is there's a fundamental difference in expectation about what government or what state or what the state can and should and is expected to deliver. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to put us on on the um, you know a, a slower or a lower pedestal here, but I, I think there is a lower expectation of what government can expect, or uh, well, what the people can expect from government. And I think that's a bad thing. I think we should be expecting more. And number two, uh, I think commerce businesses, uh, people who are in business, have a slightly different expectation of what they should deliver as businesses to the people and the economy and, and the country in general. Uh, I mean, we have quite a low corporate tax and, ex, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong to Sharil, but uh, I, I think this is an area that Sharil knows much better than me, but uh, 26% co uh, corporate tax is, is actually quite low. Uh, but but fundamentally, uh, when, when, when we are talking about lower corporate tax means that there's lower expectation of what people or what businesses should be giving back to society. So I think if, if you want to, I know this sounds a little bit cerebral and a bit conceptual, uh, but what I will say to you is what must, uh, what I did learn is society expects more from businesses and individuals yeah and uh, we expect in malaysia a lot less from individuals and businesses in towards the state and government and i think that is a dynamic that we must and we can and we should change um okay sharil brain drain how serious is this issue and apa kita boleh buat to reverse it uh it's very very serious um i can't quite remember the last figure. Uh, mm. I can't imagine uh, it's gotten better. If it has, it's only because people can't travel out. Maybe that's one of the uh, mitigating factors. Um, not making light of it, but I think that's uh, that's the truth. Because you see mm. every year, whatever data you see every year, take 2020 out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a phenomenon that's um, 
what we can do to reverse it. It's a slew of things. Um, I suppose you have to make some assumptions. Uh, ataupun better than assumptions, mungkin kajian benar-benar kena buat tentang faktor. Sebab kita boleh guess the factors lah. Uh, and kajian tu boleh confirm ataupun uh, make us re-examine some of the assumptions. So, I'll spit out some of the more popular assumptions kan. Hmm. Now, up top is probably uh, income driven. Jadi, selagi uh, kita punya purchasing power, um, well, mostly about income lah kan. Uh, hmm. Lebih rendah berbanding dengan apa yang boleh didapati di beberapa negara lain, uh, there's always going to be a pull factor away. So yeah. itu satu, that's very clinical. Yeah? Uh, tapi of course there are other softer factors juga. Uh, when I say soft meaning not about money per se. Uh, dari segi bagaimana anak muda sekarang melihat uh, sistem politik negara, yeah? um, quality kepimpinan dalam, uh, saya berani cakap ni lah, in general lah, dari kalangan parti-parti politik dan uh, pimpinan-pimpinannya, saya fikir benda tu tak boleh dinafikan ada ada menjadi faktor. Uh, hmm. Di mana uh, ramai anak muda rasa kalau uh, kalau diteruskan dengan sistem begini uh, dan uh, tak dapat memenuhi aspirasi mereka, uh, susah untuk uh, merasa inspired untuk uh, stay on, untuk setengah orang. Ya. Tak semua orang fikir macam tu tapi again, that will be a push factor pula. Yeah. Uh, selain daripada tu, saya fikir uh, wrapping it all up, one of the other assumptions juga selain sistem politik uh, is uh, similar to apa yang Howard kata, about the expectation of um, the expectation of society at large yeah um which maybe tak match dengan apa yang orang muda nak so yeah. there's a subset of society that maybe expects more uh, but it's not delivered lah for whatever reason maybe the demand isn't there from the larger uh, segment of the community the, the Malaysian population ataupun it's just not happening I, I mm-hmm. give an example uh, the feeling that our agencies, agency-agency kerajaan. Uh, and this is really not a partisan point because I think it, this problem has existed throughout uh, the different governments that run this country long or short. Uh, agency-agency kita uh, not fully funded, not properly staffed. Hmm. Sehingga kita tidak ada satu uh, keyakinan penuh. Contohnya jabat, jabatan kebajikan masyarakat boleh membantu semua orang yang memerlukan. In fact, we know tak boleh. Sebab itu, uh, I half agree with Howard saying that there's expectation, less expectation on individuals. I think in some cases, Howard, there's more expectation on politician individuals yeah. to top up uh, whatever that JKM or other agencies ought to have done. So the role of politicians and politics sendiri pun uh, berbeza di negara ni berbanding beberapa negara yang lebih maju lah. Negara maju lain, nobody expects the politicians to come up with bakul makanan. Mm-hmm. Right? Tapi what have we been seeing for the past six months? It's basically a race to to do baku makanan. Some do it uh, better than others. Uh, some can raise funds. That's all the better. That's great. Uh, some get caught up for trying to be, uh, you know, trying to get political mileage out of it. So any, in any case, all the debate has been about politicians giving laptops, uh, giving tax, giving food. Then, uh, benda ini berlaku sama ada di Semenanjung, Sabah atau Sarawak. This thing happens. Mm-mm. In reality, it shouldn't. In reality, that should be provision for already melalui government spending. Yeah. Ataupun melalui a case where your economy is high enough that you have fewer people in need. But even if you do have people in need, there should already be a system in place. Jadi bila, uh, bila negara kita masih dalam uh, era ataupun uh, bukanlah kepompong tapi dalam era di mana perkara asas macam itu pun belum sampai ke tahap yang Uh, yang memenuhi aspirasi orang muda ya. Yeah? Uh, then again I think there's a bit of a push factor. In all of those factors saya fikir satu kena kaji supaya ini bukan hanya kita punya guesswork tapi got to check uh, but I hypothesize those are some of the reasons. And apa pun reason of course saya ingat orang macam Howard dengan saya ni ada tanggungjawab juga lah untuk uh, merayu dan meminta orang muda yang yang uh, ada kaliber untuk kalau boleh Uh, cubalah stay on dekat negara kita dan uh, cuba ubah melalui apa kaedah sekalipun dan cuba contribute because if the high quality, when I say high quality, I'm being careful here but I mean the ones who can contribute more yeah. in terms of economic output, yeah. so in a very strict term, not to say one person is better than the other. Yeah. If our modal insan 
the highest earning and highest economically capable uh, modal insan leaves the country, then our economic capacity pun reduces. Hmm. So we are not helping the problem if we leave. One person leaves, nothing going to happen lah. Tapi hmm. we cannot think that way, right? You got to think yeah. of it as a collective. Uh, jadi apa pun sebabnya, okay, let's try and fix those things. Uh, but uh, on an individual point of view, uh, I think some of us have had opportunities to leave and for yeah. whatever reason, uh, we decided to stay. Uh, not that we're better people, it could have been something else like family, poll or whatever, right? In yeah. any case, I think people who have stayed, uh, whatever their political beliefs, ada, ada peranan uh, mm-hmm. untuk uh, membantu bukan hanya diri dan keluarga tapi juga negara. Um, okay, Syaril. Tadi, okay, bercakap tentang expectations lah kan? Macam Hawuk tadi kata macam, okay, expectation apa yang individual to expect. Um, Other than expectation from government, from politicians, apa yang syarikat-syarikat boleh buat? You know, yelah, ikutkan kerajaan, politicians can only do so much, kan? Syaril? Um, politicians can only do so much. This is a, <laughs> oh, this is a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> Dude, be careful there. Eh? <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm being very careful there. Hence the pause. <laughs> Put it this way lah. If, if, um, our welfare agencies, our housing agencies, any all these other things, uh, all these things that right now politicians are stepping in to help. Mm. If the 150,000 laptops were delivered on time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then there will be no need for politicians to have to solve these problems. And the, why this is important? It's important because they are mengurangkan patronage politics. Mm-hmm. It's important because they are mengurangkan the lure of corruption and the lure of getting money lah. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, because I, I'll tell you a, a hypothetical situation which may or may not exist in this country. Mm-hmm. You have a young politician who comes in to the system. Uh, mm-hmm. He or she isn't flush with cash. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. he or she is part of the middle class so tak adalah susah sangat. Yeah? No, no complaints. Tapi tak adalah yeah. anak uh, somebody yang betul-betul ada duit. Right? Yeah. So, uh, he or she climbs up the ladder and suddenly realizes if I'm ever going to go further uh, for my own careerist reasons or for the best of intentions, yeah, I'm looking around now and I'm seeing the, the only way I can do this is if I have money to give to people who need. And I'm not intending at all to keep this money in my own pocket, bukan nak pergi holiday, bukan nak, ni, hati baik ni, nak tolong. But I still have to find money. Where am I going to find money uh, <laughs> to spend that amount tiap-tiap bulan yeah. ataupun tiap-tiap minggu? Uh, setiap kali balik kawasan, setiap kali. So you need to either be already rich beforehand, uh, which some of us are not lucky enough to be in. Uh, mm. You need to have a lot of savings beforehand, uh, be willing to. You need to have, or alternative three, you need to have a current job which pays enough that you can portion a certain amount to spend. Or you have to find donors. Mm. This is when it becomes a bit slippery slope lah. If the donors are just giving you out of the goodness of their hearts, fine. Yeah. But if it then gets uh, to a point where, as it often probably does, it's given in exchange for something or an expectation of something, then you know where this leads to. So I'm not saying that this is at all an excuse for corruption. Of course not. But uh, at a systemic level, until and unless our agencies are able to be provisioned properly, there will always be a need for money. Uh, unless somebody can crack this magic Inilah, there's some 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 magic button that none of us have found before mm. where without spending anything without being elected and therefore getting uh, peruntukan uh, you can somehow you can somehow you know be popular in your kawasan or whatever and I, I don't think uh, we're at that point um, uh, you know maybe I take that back a bit I'm sure there are politicians that have proven otherwise but to be prudent let me rephrase that and say that for the vast majority of politicians even the ones with the best intentions There's always a question of do you have enough money, yeah. And that shouldn't be a question at all. I I would totally agree with Cheryl there, and this is coming from someone who's been elected in the same kawasan for two general elections in a row. Uh, mm. Observations are absolutely correct, uh, and 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 quite frankly, uh, I pay to do my job. I'm elected. Yeah. I'd like to say legitimately, uh, I'm legitimately elected in my kawasan, but. 
I still, despite sekarang pembangkang, which is where I am, pun hmm. ada sedikit, not enough, but sedikit peruntukan, um, I still have to pay to do my job because the expectation of those who are left out of the system and the institutions are much higher than what uh, you have or you are uh, what have what you have available for you to deliver to them in terms of aid and assistance dan benda ni adalah sesuatu yang memerlukan satu perubahan sistemik tadi share hmm. tentang tentang uh, i mean systemic changes or masalah permasalahan sistemik tapi yeah. bagi saya ini adalah satu masalah institusi di mana ekspektasi rakyat terhadap seseorang yang me, atau uh, memegang jawatan sebagai wakil rakyat yeah. terhadap atau berbanding dengan uh, apa yang sebenarnya ada kepada seseorang yang memegang jawatan dalam institusi mm. uh, It's it's a problem, and I think there needs to be a, a total revamp of the entire structure of uh, parliamentary democracy or uh, representation the, the representation of democracy as we know in this country. It, it's it's quite scary. Um. Okay. I'm actually quite curious, Menanya. Um. Because okay, kita kita pergi balik ke pengangguran kan. Uh, cakap tentang pengangguran ni. Industri apa yang paling affected? Uh, contohlah macam kalau kita uh, kalau kita tengok tourism and aviation industry there's no future for tourism as it stands jadi from government's perspective do they just assume okay lah uh, tourism uh, tourism bukan fokus kita lagi moving forward so do we focus on other industries atau tunggu je syaria mm, no i don't think we will we'll, uh, ride off tourism or aviation i don't think that's an option uh, in fact this uh, latest announcement pun ada bagi one off i think I can't remember how much, RM3,000 or something like that to pengusaha-pengusaha pelancongan uh, details, you gotta, you gotta check, but they're basically a one-off aid, which I don't think is anywhere close to be enough, uh, being yeah. enough. Um, but in any case, that shows that uh, government, this current government, and I think the whole political system pun tak ada siapa yang nak kata, let's forget tourism, or let's forget this, this industry or that industry mm-hmm. because of COVID. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, we don't have that choice. Lah. In any way, tourism receipts do help a lot. Uh, in our economy pun jadi perkara ni bukan satu option uh, cuma kalau soalan I need to tentang where do we go from here which industry should we focus on I think that's a legitimate question um, dan di sini saya fikir pengalaman COVID ni akan uh, menuntut uh, the next government uh, especially if elections come you know in 12 months or whatever mm-hmm. and all political parties will start presenting to the people apa sebenarnya dia plan the, the next 5 year 10 year plan yeah economy wise lah uh, which industries which subsectors do they want to double down on which ones do they want to sort of phase out mm. the second part of what i said too is actually a very important decision juga uh, sebab kadang-kadang parti politik tak berani uh, yeah. nak kata bahawa this particular economic activity is no longer sustainable ataupun is no longer competitive uh, because it's easier to just pump money yeah uh, into it um, because you won't lose votes It's easier to do that compared to, okay, let's really PK balik what's the retraining scheme, yeah. what's the phasing out scheme of particular economic activity that we think in five to ten years we want to phase out of mm-hmm. our, you know, of being too dependent on. Um, I, I'm not going to say on a public show what I think those industries are and they have really fleshed out my ideas. But I think there are a couple uh, where kita tak berani buat because yeah. uh, ada segel- segolongan yang masih bergantung harap kepada aktiviti itu and have not known to do anything else. Uh, yeah. So, what's a phasing out plan? Phasing out plan could be that, okay, this generation fine will help them to this particular point, tapi okay. anak mereka tidak lagi akan diberikan subsidi. Tidak akan lagi diberikan. Instead, we'll do a special project where we make sure that we retrain and we monitor whether they get employed in other industries and we have a special scheme of some sorts to make sure that it's fair. Because we're phasing this activity out, we make sure that they don't get hurt by this national decision. Uh, so itu pun saya fikir parti-parti politik perlu ditanya mm. oleh rakyat. Uh, mm. Are you going to support this industry or are you just going to pukul rata everything yeah. uh, and uh, and not have a focus? Jadi di sini yalah beberapa industri yang patut kita fokus I think uh, got to think about our healthcare capacity based on our covid experience. Uh, mm. Got to think about reviving the tourism uh, sector because actually tourism boom ni probably on paper is a sure thing good. 
uh, because I think there will be pent up demand yang akan lepas geram lah. Uh, yeah. Malaysians will travel domestically and foreign tourists pun akan datang in droves to this part of the world. Uh, siapa yang dapat maintain dia punya homestay pun saya rasa boleh dapat, boleh charge banyak kot. Yeah. So those things Double. can ask inflation in those prices. Uh, so it will be it will be a shame to let that go. Um, and how we arrange to make sure that we benefit most from from that boom, expected boom will be will be key. I wonder what will you do to reduce unemployment if you were to become in power? Howard? Uh, let me tell you what I did do or what I have done uh, uh, and put it vis-a-vis what I wish I could do if I was to be in power. Yeah. Uh, going into the, 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 the pandemic, um, mm-hmm. I... Uh, me and a few of my partners actually uh, this is me not wakirat yet me as uh, as an enterprising young individual uh, we realized that we need we needed to spur consumption to feed the economy okay 60% of uh, the malaysian economy is is based on domestic consumption right mm-hmm. uh, if one was to put one was to con- one was to contribute towards the Malaysian economy. You need to spur consumption. Uh, and what does one do when, uh, pretty much, uh, whether you look forward, back, front, you know, left, right, and center, mm-hmm. people don't have the money to spend. Yeah, you spur consumption. So you find those who you know for certain have the money to spend. You look at the rich people. Mm. Mm-hmm. So how does one spur consumption from the target audience, meaning the rich people, uh, for them to spend money so you can create jobs? I opened a top end restaurant, and that's precisely what I did. Now, uh, I'm not saying that's the be all and end all. That's the fundamental one and only solution. Go and you know set up a an expensive restaurant. So. <laughs> No, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, I think each and every single uh, discussion or every each and every single decision that one makes, it really depends on what you want to achieve versus what you want to achieve as an output. And, um, you know, I didn't really need to have a business and this business that we and my partners and I have set up, it's not something that's going to make me any money. <laughs> I can tell you that it's not going to make me any money. In fact, it's bleeding me individually uh, money right now. But the fact is at that particular, to- uh, at that particular point, uh, you know, government's just fallen, uh, stopped being a state minister. Uh, I-, I needed to do something. So I decided that I'll put three or four months into being a chef set up a restaurant targeted the individuals where the the spending power was to Mm -hmm. give them an opportunity to spend money to create jobs and that's precisely what we are providing to the perakian economy right now no less than 25 employment opportunities and we're still paying them right now despite the fact that we're we're, we're not able to open Mm -hmm. so that's what I'm doing as an individual. It's about seeing where the opportunities are, where the needs, and what well, basically where the demands are, and and fitting into that picture. Uh, I think if 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 I was to come back into government, whether it's, it's state or federal, uh, as a nation, as a bangsa, I think there needs to be a very large degree of de decentralization in terms of economic policy, in terms of whether it's an expansionary agenda or whether it's about, you know, clawing back of what we've lost. It needs mm-hmm. to be decentralized. What is required and what is what is essential in Sabah is absolutely different from what is required and essential in Perak and what is essential and def- uh, what is required in Malacca. Mm. I think we, we can agree there. So, who is the federal government to say that the National Economic Recovery Plan decided, promulgated, and rolled out in some 14th floor in a building in Putrajaya going to be relevant with what's happening on the ground in Perak? That, that's, that, for me, is something real. So there needs to be a, a, a strong notion of decentralization of economic expansionary policy, okay? Uh, 
Yeah, you can agree or disagree, but there's no right or wrong. But what I'm saying, and this is what we need. Para needs to have a different model and a, a more close to the ground and informed from the ground model as what is done in Malacca and what's done in Sabah and what's done in Sarawak. So that's the basis. And, and moving on from there, I think um, those who are, who are kind of market centric in thinking is going to shoot me down. And I know a lot of your audience will probably say that, no, the market should have the say in what happens. I'm saying no, the market shouldn't have all the say government needs to have the will needs to have the thinking and forward thinking you know will yeah. will forward thinking will to mm. make things happen and put resources where that's required and give facilitation and give resources to the state government because resources and taxes are taken at the federal level those who knows best are the state so therefore put your two heads together and do something that's productive and we don't see that right now so how would ni ingat ni pali buat tengah bersidang ke okay shahrez okay Okay. Panjang, okay. Tu, okay. Okay. Habis. <laughs> Panjang tu pendek sikit I think um, There needs to be more power Given to those who are on the ground There needs to be more power given to People like Sharil and myself Who are actually on the ground uh, Which doesn't lend much You know, profit <laughs> To our political careers But when we're on the ground, we see and hear And feel what is on the ground that's what is needed and unfortunately that link between those who make decisions at the ivory tower up there <laughs> those of us who are on the ground and anak muda yang dengar suara rintih rakyat kat bawah sini i think that needs to be closed and and i think you can make put two and two okay, together yeah. thank you for that howard shahril pula kita bagi <laughs> shahril nak bersidang tak <laughs> saya takkan uh, so so dramatis uh, <laughs> But uh, saya akan tambah sikit lah apa yang dia sebut uh, Satu saya fikir setuju dalam hal ni uh, Tak ada yang market centric dalam panel hari ni kot Antara saya dengan Howard uh, We are not, I mean we're not anti market uh, But we uh, we don't we don't believe market solves everything uh, We definitely do not believe that mm. Jadi dalam hal pengangguran uh, Saya fikir uh, All you have to see is pre-COVID unemployment numbers have always been there. There's already evidence uh, that market doesn't work. Uh, mm. uh, unemployment is your worry, as it ought to be. Uh, jadi di situ pun satu perkara. Apa yang perlu kita buat? Um, expansionary government uh, spending definitely. Uh, di sini yang uh, kita kena um, mencabar uh, institusi pembuat dasar. Kenapa saya sebut istilah yeah. institusi pembuat dasar ni? Sebab saya rasa ni bukan hanya kerajaan uh, ataupun ahli politik dan kerajaan. Tapi yeah. institusi-institusi uh, Baik Bank Negara Malaysia Our Central Bank um, Which is really the, the biggest institution I see that a lot of people don't realise uh, Has a lot of power uh, uh, And has decided To not use that power mm. uh, And other, other You know the, the whole the whole um, uh, Decision making apparatus uh, Yang bukan hanya ahli politik So in some cases, in some cases, some civil servants, not all civil servants, some civil servants uh, who who have the best intentions tapi are still operating dalam sistem market. Maknanya pasaran, jangan subsidi upah jangan bagi banyak sangat, hmm. uh, belanja jangan tinggi sangat, nanti defisit tinggi, defisit tinggi yeah. bahaya, rating bahaya. Uh, benda-benda macam tu yang operate in that paradigm, uh, saya fikir kita kena mencabar mereka untuk uh, harap-harap boleh beralih paradigma supaya uh, sanggup belanja. Uh, dari segi kaedah belanja itu, Howard memberi satu cadangan supaya uh, lebih decentralized lah in terms of um, you know where the money goes and how the expend uh, the, the spending goes. Uh, I agree in principle. In fact, dalam soal jaminan pekerjaan, the job guarantee scheme that I believe in, uh, yeah. it can only work jika idea-idea pekerjaan itu datang daripada kerajaan negeri ataupun kerajaan tempatan. Uh, because you only know, uh, you, you know, in 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 Perak or in Bido, for example, you only, only the folks there, the elected officials there, ideally. There's a difference between me and Howard. You know, he says give power to me, I appreciate that, but I'm not elected. So from a democratic mandate, it shouldn't be people like me. It should be people like Howard. Belum lagi saja. This is me being nice. 
That's me being nice. But no, it's a serious point, right? It should be elected folks on the ground at the local level uh, who are given the necessary funding at the federal, from the federal entity, i.e. the federal government. Uh, dan mereka yang di state ataupun di local areas yang menentukan lah uh, mm. di mana sebenarnya uh, harus perbelanjaan itu pergi within certain parameters lah. We're not expecting the federal government to just give a bunch of money. Yeah. It's not going happen. Tapi mm. dalam hal-hal pengoperasian ataupun uh, pelaksanaan uh, skim pekerjaan misalnya, there needs to be a real involvement and not just lip service uh, from local governments and local entities. Jadi di situ saya fikir uh, ada persetujuan. Uh, mm. Tapi paling besar, paling besar ya. In terms of how you operationalize it, we can debate to the cows come home. Mm. But government needs to spend. Uh, and government needs to get out of this deficit uh, phobia. Uh, then that will decide whether we are in this lull for a long time or we can mm. bounce back uh, fairly quickly. Thank you for that, Syahril. Uh, tak ada rasa macam bersidang sikit lah. Tapi uh, baiklah dengan apa yang Syahril dan Howard katakan sepanjang segmen balai ini, saya berharap apa yang kerajaan has in place or will have in place akan membantu menyelesaikan isu-isu ini. Dan semoga kita dapat lihat perubahan dan hopefully insyaAllah pandemik COVID-19 will go away and things will go back to normal. Yeah, thank you so much both Howard and Sharil for coming on tonight. It has been an insightful discussion. These are the things that we need to know, the anak-anak muda want to know, need to know. And we have to be aware of the current issues, causes and how we can solve it. It was good to hear from not just one, but two who knows the system well. So thank you guys. Thank you and uh, have a good evening. Selamat malam. Thank you. Tiap-tiap minggu kami akan cuba bawakan topik isu-isu semasa topik yang anda semua can relate to walaupun dah banyak platform di luar sana tapi mungkin cara kami berbeza dan mungkin soalan pun berbeza dari yang lain. Every week we have different tips kan? I need different message for our viewers and tonight's episode is one of them. How to tackle unemployment. Hmm. Yes, betul. Topik malam ni is on pengangguran dan kita bawakan dua tetamu khas Howard Lee dan Syahril Hamdan untuk berbincang tentang isu ni. Ikutkan topik pengangguran ni begitu besar and we try to narrow it down as much as we can agar sampai message tu kan Ilin. Agar juga. Agar. <laughs> agar. <laughs> okay, segmen dimulakan dengan faktor-faktor lain yang menyumbang kepada pengangguran dan bagaimana keadaan negara sekiranya dibandingkan dengan negara-negara jiran. Kita kemudian beralih pula kepada polisi-polisi apa yang ada dan patut ada oleh kerajaan dan bagaimana kerajaan boleh membantu golongan belia dan graduan baru to be more marketable and employable. Howard dan Syahrul juga ada menyentuh tentang isu brain drain and what can be done to resolve this. Anda boleh menonton semula episod malam ini di Facebook atau YouTube page kami. Good job summar- summarizing that I in a short time. We hope everyone did learn a thing or two. If not, whatever that we've uh, discussed about earlier from tonight and we shall see you guys again next week yeah. deep platform dan sama dan sama selamat malam